Today we're going to look at the Viewlight AV Bridge by Cloner Alliance. Now this is a basic AV capture device for analog sources. It supports both S-Video as well as composite video input. will work with NTSC and PAL. And it has a built-in screen, so it's an all-in-one solution. Plus, it will play back on your TV through HDMI out, but it's an all-in-one solution to capture your home videos. We're going to check this one out, put it through its paces, and check out the quality. Okay, in a previous video, I looked at the Cloner Alliance Pro box, which was a standalone capture device, which connected through either HDMI or component or composite input it output to your television over HDMI and it allowed you to record directly onto a hard drive or a USB stick. And now I have the Cloner Alliance ViewLight AV. This one here is a self-contained unit and it has its own built-in screen, so no TV required. It says next generation. It, it supports CVBS, which is uh, Chroma Video Blanking and Sync, which is normally called composite input or S-Video capture, audio to MP3, uh, 1080p upscale and ultra low latency this is the new box I'm going to open this one up and we'll show it off and I'm going to do some testing we'll try it out and uh, see how it performs I'll capture some tapes that I shot in analog on high 8 digital 8 and other analog formats but I'll put analog we'll try the S video capture etc but before that let's just take a look at uh, some of the features here it has a three and a half inch screen and um, it just shows the MP3 analog to digital, audio to MP3, upscale to 1080. All right, let's open the box together, and we'll see what's in this one. Here is the device here. It is relatively small, which is always good. So basically, your camera and your VCR, and this is all you need. It does have an output, an HDMI output, which means you can connect it to uh, a, a monitor as well. S-Video in and your standard audio video input. And it's got an auxiliary in and out. We'll check that out in a minute. We'll pop this part as well and take a look inside and see how it's built. But there is the device itself. Also in the box will be obviously accessories, so let's just check them out and see what we get. And in the box we have accessories for remote control. Looks similar to the remote that came with the Cloner Alliance Pro, but doesn't have the input buttons on it. It just has buttons to select video, image, music record stop and I guess that's to take a picture source to switch the sources volume up and down I imagine that's for playback comes with an AV cable comes with a three point five double ended cable a USB power source and a USB cord to power the unit up and a right angle which is always nice, right angle um, adapter for HDMI. Which is always nice because that way if you're plugging in you know, on the back of a TV where the ports stick straight out the back, you can have them come out at an angle. But that's nice to have that on here while well, it's kind of useless because your cord would then be going. I guess if it's hanging off the end of a table, your cord could go down rather than stick out. Anyway, on the device itself, uh, where do we store? We store. We can either store to a USB directly, so you could re record to a directly to a USB stick, or you could record right to a micro SD card, or I'm, I'm assuming a portable hard drive. We'll try it. We'll try it on different devices, and of course, the instruction manual. So let's just take a look at the specs and see what it does. Off the bat, they warn about using low quality low capacity SD cards and USB sticks they're recommending 16 gigabyte or larger that's because the files it's going to generate are relatively large my other one generates 8 gigabytes per hour for standard definition video the other one I've got will do HD as well this one here will be just standard definition but that's what most people are after is capturing stuff from their you know their camcorder and so forth um, they tell you to format do a full format 
and not a quick format. And uh, they recommend uh, are you were formatted in FAT32 NTFS or EXFAT. I would recommend EXFAT for larger drives. And that's because FAT32 is limited to 4 gigabytes of file size. I don't know what file size this turns out. We're going to find that out when I try it out here. But I'm just reading through the manual here. And uh, you can also uh, record straight to a PC using the PC port. So you can plug it into the computer and use this just as a capture device. But most people I think would use this to record direct to either a hard drive or to USB. I use my Cloner Alliance Pro direct to a, a, a portable hard drive. Actually it's a docking station I can just drop bare drives in. I use it all the time. It's in constant use. In fact it's recording right now recording some videos from VHS for someone right now as I speak. The advantage of course to this one over the Cloner Alliance Pro is this one has S video in whereas the Cloner Alliance Pro does not but the Pro Box does feature HDMI in and it does feature component input so it's got features that this one doesn't have and it supports full HD so it's a good choice if you want to record stuff HD source material and I will leave it at that you can it, you can insert what you want in there because I won't talk about whether it will or will not record protected content because if I mention anything about that then I'm sure that YouTube will take the video down. So I will not, including with this one, I'm going to try it, but I will not confirm or deny whether it can or cannot record from protected content. The limitations that we've got here is it's limiting, uh, if you're on obviously FAT32, the file is limited to 4 gigabytes and then it will split it into another file. I don't know on this one because my other one has multiple recording, like multiple bit rates, but uh, at the highest bit rate it's 8 gigabytes or per hour. So 2 hours will fit on 16 gigabytes. On the other one, I'm assuming this one's probably going to be in a, a similar situation, but we'll find out once I get it done. It says here that if the file exceeds 16 gigabytes, it's going to uh, generate a new file. And also, if your file is limited to three hours, if, it, if the file has not reached four gigabytes or 16 gigabytes, but the recording time exceeds three hours, it will generate a new file. So three hours is the maximum file size on this one here. And that's another difference between this and the Cloner Alliance Pro, which I reviewed earlier, is it, it is not limited in size. And I actually used it to record all of King Charles' coronation video off TV. I wanted to record that onto a hard drive just to have, you know, I wasn't going to watch it, but just to kind of have it. And that thing went on all night and it recorded flawlessly. The files are, some of the files are like over 30 gigs. Like 32 gigs is the maximum size for it, but it recorded all night. Um, okay, so that's... Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just looking here at some of the accessories and reading through the manual and we're going to hook this thing up momentarily. I'm just going to record, I'm going to record directly to a 128 gig USB stick. This is formatted in uh, EXFAT. We're going to capture from a couple different sources. I'm going to capture some digital 8 footage from this old DCR TRV 110. This is my first digital aid handy cam from I think it was 1999, somewhere in there. Is that when it was made? When was this made? 1999, January 1999. This was the first digital aid camera that Sony made. It has one speed, SP, but it has the conventional AV output and it also has S video. So I'm going to use the S video input and I'm going to capture both some regular high 8 footage and digital 8 footage on here. We'll also capture some footage from a beta or VHS using the analog input. We'll test that out because I have footage from both kicking around here that I can do VHS and beta. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the HDMI out, although I guess I could show you guys it on the monitor. We'll plug it into the monitor here just so you can see what it looks like. But with the built-in screen, it's really not necessary. Now, I don't expect that the quality is going to be as good as the other one. I mean, I could be wrong. It might be identical. But the other Cloner Alliance Pro can capture high definition as well, whereas this one's strictly for standard definition. But 
I am going to include some footage that I captured with the Cloner Alliance Pro. Namely, some footage I recorded on my beta cam. Not a beta movie, but the real beta cam that I've got. So we can look at standard definition footage from a broadcast quality camera. And that should blow away any of these consumer cameras by a country mile. Uh, we'll look at stuff that was shot with this camera. The footage that uh, the digital 8 footage that we're going to look at was actually shot with this specific camera. We'll look at some footage that was shot with my EVW 300, which is a high 8 camera, a broadcast high 8 camera. And we'll look at some footage that was shot with my old CCD V5000, which is on this tape. So I've got um, footage from, from here, from this camera. Uh, I have another one here as well. It's in the house. i got to go get it. That was also shot with this camera that I've never shown before. I found a tape that was shot in 2000 with this camera. And uh, it's just some birds that I found at my parents' old house that were nesting. And I was there with my camera and filmed them. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll put that on just to see, see how it looks. But this video is going to run for a few minutes because we're going to look at some long shots taken off the Cloner Alliance. So you guys can uh, look at this and see if it's something that might interest you. I think that uh, this is a product that is going to interest a lot of people that are into archiving their own tapes because it appears to be, and I'm hoping it's going to be everything that I think it will be because I do have experience with Cloner Alliance's Pro Box and it is fantastic. And this is just another tool in the toolbox that makes things easier because I don't have to, well... The other one's hooked up anyway, so I can just plug into it, and it's got a hard drive plugged into it, but I have to turn my TV on to see what I'm doing. This one here promises to be able to just plug it into the source and not have to hook it up to a monitor. Just press play, you'll see it on the screen, and you're off to the races. That's the whole idea behind this particular device. So let's connect it with S-Video to this camera, and we'll get capturing. And then we'll look at the, the source footage right off of the USB stick. I'm going to set it up so that everything's converted to 1080p because it does up convert. So everything will be on a level playing field, both the footage from this as well as the footage from its bigger brother, the Cloner Alliance Pro. And I'll even show you some high definition captures because I got a TV commercial, probably best TV commercial I think I've seen in the longest time. And it's, uh, it's for an internet company knocking another internet company let's just say um, there's no words in it at all it's it's one of the best commercials I've seen in recent memories because there's not a word that is said but it's funny as hell and for those of you out here that probably already know that, that live out in this area already know which one I'm talking about but let's just say it's technology getting trashed I'll leave that for the end and that'll show you what the what the big brother through this one can do capturing in HD, in full HD off of TV. Anyway, let's uh, plug this thing in and check it out. Okay, so I'm dimming some of the lights down here so we don't get quite as many reflections. But first things first, I'm going to plug in the DC power supply and the unit boots up. No signal, no kidding, because I don't have any signal applied. If I just turn the camera on here just to give it a signal so that it actually will see something. And I probably have to change the source on here. I think the camera's on, or is it not? This camera hasn't been used in so long. Yeah, now it's on. We'll turn the volume, volume down, okay. Um, it's got no signal from CVBS because we're using the S video, so I need to go in here and configure it. So I think I do that by pressing the input button here. And it now says S video. And it's telling me that it's got an NTSC signal. Of course there's nothing showing because the camera is capped up but there's a signal from the camera but this is what we're going to be recording so let me um, let me get the tape loaded here oh I gotta put my my USB plug in my USB if I were to plug in a micro SD this light would light up but I plug in the USB and it should light up and tell me that I plugged in USB which it does now it reads that we've got a USB stick in here now I can change the date on here right now the date is incorrect so if I press menu I'm sure I can do it from here settings okay this is where we can change all our, our settings so let me go back to the general settings here and yeah what am I doing here 
settings. Okay. So language is English. Uh, the source is S video. Resolution is auto. So if I select this 1080p or auto, this will select my output. Video bit rate, 4 megabits, 6 megabits, 8. So it goes up as high as 8 megabits. Audio bit rate, we can select 128, 192, 320. We'll select 320 just because it's the best, going to be the best quality. Speaker volume, I've got it set to mute right now just because I don't want to hear it, but I can certainly turn that up because I don't have the camera on now, or do I? I think I do, so I might get feedback if I turn it up too loud. Um, video in volume, etc., etc. Speaker volume, LCD brightness, information bars on, auto stop timer, we're not going to set this. TF transfer mode, what does this select? In, well, there's no TF card on here, of course. Duh. Um, that's a SD card, by the way. Uh, system time. Let's uh, set the system time. So right now it's 2023, and it's um, July 25th. So we'll select this to July and July 25th. There we go. And the time now is 1445, because it's going to be based on a 24-hour clock, of course. 14, 45. Okay, and then, um, yes, and now I've updated the time. So it'll, this is for setting the file time when you make the recording. And I guess to go back, I either press home or press the return key. I'll press return. Videos. This is for playback, right? If you want to play back your videos, it'll say there's no files found. Same with pictures, same with audio, because you can you can put pictures on here as well. I guess if you had them, if you took a snapshot, there's a button on here for doing a snapshot. So you can actually take a still photo from your video and it will store it in pictures. And audio, that would be for uh, what you record audio into MP3s. I can see where that would be useful for someone who, say, has a, um, let's just say, a subscription audio service on, say, their phone or some other device, and you could plug it into here and make a hard copy from your subscription service so that when you cancel your subscription service and all the music goes away, you've got a hard copy. But I didn't say that, but you get the drift of what that's for. We'll play around with that. We'll do some royalty-free content to the uh, input for this. Um, okay, let's go back to get out of this. And I'm going to uh, get some video playing, and we'll capture it. And then we're going to try a bunch of different formats. So let me get a tape into this camera. So I hit record. And there it is. It's recording. So we're going to let some footage record from this tape. I'll do some footage from the Hi8 tape. We'll do some footage from VHS. I will also use the composite input on there as well so that we can see the difference in the quality between one and the other. But it's that simple. You plug in your memory card or your USB stick or your portable hard drive and that's it. It's really that simple. Of course you can edit on the fly while you're watching your video you can start and stop it it'll create a separate file for each clip so if i want to stop it here i just press the stop button it'll save it and then a new file will be created when i start up again so this makes for easy edit if you want to edit out footage that you've say shot and maybe you got shots of your feet like a lot of people ended up with the camera was running and then you can just start up again when you want to start your next file and it will create new files every time you start and stop it. So one thing I wanted to try is I switched it down to uh, auto from 1080p. I want to see if it changes anything on this. It looks like it's taking the aspect ratio and making it 16 by 9 which is something that the, the Cloner Alliance Pro allows you to select the aspect ratio and I didn't see any way to select 4 by 3 or 16 by 9 on this one. I don't know whether it can be done from the remote either. 
I didn't see any any option for that. So we'll see what the resulting file looks like, whether it has changed the aspect ratio, because this is certainly shot in 4x3, as you can see on the camera here. It's a 4x3 screen. So it does look like it is filling it to 16x9. So we can play back recordings that are on here either using the remote control by pressing the video button or we can navigate over using the home button and navigating over to video so we don't actually have to use the remote as extra but not something that you need unless you want to play it back on your TV which I'll, I'll do that momentarily. But uh, select the video you want and then or select video and then you can select the video clip that you want to play and it'll play and then to get back to the input just press the return key and that takes you back to the the previous screen now if I take this and plug this into a TV I should get to plug this into HDMI we'll be able to play this back right on the TV and we'll take a look at how it looks on the plasma here in the shop but um, we're, we'll look at the files we'll import the files directly but we'll, I will look at this directly on playback because that way you know someone could you could record a bunch of stuff onto a, a USB or a TF card and actually use this as your video player to play it back. If you didn't have a computer handy, for example, this could become your playback device as well. Another nice feature of uh, such a compact, portable, all-in-one solution. So here it's plugged into my plasma screen. This is live video coming off of the tape. If I select the video format, we can look at stuff that was recorded and I have the sound on the TV turned down, but if I turned it up, we, I'm sure we would hear it. But here's playback. So that's playback off of the uh, memory card or the USB stick. And that's the type of quality that it records off of standard definition NTSC video. Not bad considering what camera shot this, which wasn't the greatest camera in the world, I might admit. It's a Digital 8. It was the first generation Digital 8, and they did have a fair number of visible pixels because of the low resolution sensor that Sony put onto all their consumer digital 8 cameras. They did kind of cripple it, but you know what? Just looking at this playing back on the TV, I can tell you right now, the quality is excellent. I'm pretty sure this unit also supports PAL. In fact, I can pretty much assure you that it does support PAL. I do have a PAL camera. I'm going to do a couple of recordings in PAL and we'll see how it how it copes with a PAL signal from a high 8 PAL camera. Okay, so we'll record this. This is the recording on a, off of a PAL camera. It tells me right here it's PAL. I'm talking about the black and white viewfinder on the camera itself, as this is the camera that I'm using. This one is just a, a little high 8 PAL format. But the whole idea is to see how smooth this captures PAL compared to um, the NTSC. One feature the remote control does give you is fast forward and rewind. So if you're watching a file and you press and hold the, uh, or you click it, it'll go a few seconds ahead. But if you press and hold the fast forward key, it will scan at high speed. Same with the reverse key. I only, I want, so if I go backwards. So that's another feature that you can do with the remote control is you've got full control of playback at multiple speeds from the memory playback which makes it a great unit if you're just going to take your videos and put them onto a, a hard drive or a USB stick and then to leave this plugged into your TV you can use this as the playback device. So you can see the infrared sensors on the front so if this was sitting in your entertainment cabinet for example you'd be able to control it remotely and you can turn the LCD screen off so for example if you were using this as a dedicated media player Tapping the power button 
so turn the LCD off. Now you can use it as a dedicated media player connected into your TV or your system and not have the light from the LCD bothering you. If you're going to use this as a playback device, that's I think a, a great feature. Tap the power key again, turns it back on. To shut the unit down, you press and hold the power key for eight seconds. And that'll shut the entire unit down. And then of course to turn it back on, just press the power key and it'll turn the unit back on. Okay, now I'm gonna capture some analog recordings because we did a digital recording from Digital 8. I'll capture some recordings um, from my other cameras and other sources so that we can compare the quality from analog sources. So first I will get some footage from my old, this is an old um, CCD V5000. Oh, I went to Las Vegas and I went to San Diego. There should be some interesting stuff on here. Let's uh, take a look at some footage shot on the CCD V5000 in analog and see how this captures it. Again, it was shot in high eight, but this is off of an analog capture. Got some footage at Las Vegas that was uh, not part of my one of my other couple of videos that I did because I've done a few of them down there, but this one was shot on the V5000. As far as playing back files, not only can it play back files that were made with the unit, but it can play back other files as well. I've loaded a couple of files from my computer onto here. One of them is one of my productions, my YouTube videos. Another one was a file that was recorded on the Big Brother Cloner Alliance Pro. So if we go down here and look at this one here, here's my Kenmore vacuum cleaner belt repla replacement. It's going to be a real easy, quick one. How to replace the belt in the power head for a Kenmore vacuum cleaner. So this is a 60 frame per second 1080p video file. And the next one here is uh, a commercial for Shaw that I recorded off of TV from the Cloner Alliance and Cloner Alliance Pro. And it plays on here as well. So it will also play back content that was recorded on devices other than this device itself. It'll play back standard MP4 files. Those were, one of them was a high bit rate. The uh, um, bit rate that I used when I encoded this was 25 megabits. So it's playing back a 25 it's be a megabit. Easy, quick one. How to replace the belt. So that works flawless. I'm going to do a few more captures on here. We're going to take it apart, take a look at it, and then we'll compare the different videos. But um, first, let's capture some analog recordings. I'm going to try some recording some audio now. I've got my audio input plugged into the auxiliary. I'm going to select the input here for audio. It gives me the audio recording meters. I'll select record and I'm going to play it back on the other device, which in this case is my phone. This is just some music from Music Bakery. So I hit record and hit play. I also did want to mention that in audio recording you do not have to use the auxiliary input. You can also use just the audio in when you select the audio mode. You can record direct standard CVBS input. And all I need to do is start the tape playing and uh, hit record. So if I start the tape playing and then hit record. almost embarrassing. This is the video that I did years and years ago for a 
basically a vacuum cleaner with an ultraviolet light on it. This is almost embarrassing. It's a vacuum cleaner. It's a vacuum cleaner. That's all. It's just a vacuum cleaner with a UV germicidal lamp on the uh, output. Yes, good old hospital. VGH, I think, we shot that one. Okay, so that's a recording from uh, a non copy protected source. What happens if I put in a. Uh, a movie? Is it going to work with this one, or is it going to say, ah, sorry, it's got macrovision. Well, part works. We'll hit record and see if it records. And see whether it will actually record this. Oh, look, it's not recording. Interesting. It's stuck at zero. It is not recording anything with macrovision on it. Interesting. So it does not support recording of a macrovision signal. That's too bad. <laughs> but at least you know it is able to detect macrovision and if you try to record it, it just stays at zero. So much for recording your VHS movies. There are ways around that though. You would need to use a macrovision scrubber just like other devices see the sound I can hear it but the picture there's no picture so that answers that question it will not record a signal that's protected with macrovision and indeed if I go back and look at what was recorded you'll see that the last thing that was recorded was this uh, blue light ultraviolet And the next one, of course, was one that I downloaded onto it, the card. But the next file, there was no file there. When I tried to record Jurassic Park, it wouldn't let me record it. We're going to look at the playback files now, and then I'm going to take it apart. This is an unscaled source, so you can record it at 720 by 480 without any upscaling to HD. So if the input select is set to auto, it will record it at the original resolution of the video file. And that's why we're seeing a small picture on the screen because I'm not resizing it. The shots that follow, I put it into 1080 mode. So the device itself is going to upscale to 1080. But I just wanted to show you guys, it does have the ability to record in standard definition. And I will point out that this is recorded in the correct 4x3 aspect ratio when it's set to auto. I'll scale it on the computer now to full screen. So this is the same shot, scaled to full screen, and as you'll see, it is um, a 4x3 shot. Now this is scaled in my software on the computer from the original 4x3. The next shot that's going to follow will be one that was scaled by the Cloner Alliance into an HD stream. So we can check out the difference in the quality between the 480 scaling it on my computer in Premiere and how this one does it in hardware. This shot, as you can see, was scaled by the Cloner Alliance into 1080p and it did change it from a 4x3 to a 16x9 image. Although, as you can see, it has done a very good job of upscale. There's no scaling being done on my end on the computer. This is what came out of the device itself when set to 1080p output but the video purist would keep it in auto so that it would be recorded at um, its standard 480 recording. For, it would convert it to 480p from 480i, but it would keep it as a 480 4x3 original aspect ratio recording. 
this has digital zoom on it, so that's the extent of the zoom here. I can't see color because it's just a black and white LCD screen on this one. So this is the PAL signal I recorded this afternoon with that Hi8 PAL camcorder. So we can see how it handles converting a PAL signal over. One thing I've noticed is it does not change the frame rate. It's still 25 frames per second. And you get a bit of motion judder here when it does it, especially when I convert it over to 30. I tell you, we sure seconds. have gotten spoiled with our color viewfinders that we've got on cameras these days, that's for sure. Everything used to be in black and white on the uh, CRT monitors of the day. This has digital zoom on it, so that's the extent of the zoom here. I can't see color because it's just a black and white LCD screen on this one. Of course, despite PAL having 625 lines, the consumer versions of cameras, because they had drum spun slower, an idea actually what, uh, recorded less PAL resolution than NTSC. I'll show you what an NTSC looks like. I'll make an NTSC like right after this analog shot. recording you know, see on a huge NTSC camera as well. I've, in got, this I've got several, but they can do it on the same because type of camera. did not look very good for the same conditions on the consumer cameras. Same with their VCRs. They had a worse picture resolution-wise just because the rotation of the head drum was slower and that affected the amount of horizontal resolution. Even though they had a higher vertical resolution, the horizontal I'll resolution tell you, sure was less. Spoiled and it's very apparent with our color viewfinders that we've got on. It's not that good. Let's take a look at days, that's for sure. something shot with a high eight NTSC camera. Everything used to be in black and white. This footage was shot in, uh, I think it was 1996, with a Sony EVW 300, which was the three chip broadcast quality professional high eight, as they called it. The camera that was marketed to low budget TV stations that couldn't afford to get a beta cam. And it was good, for sure. It was, uh, I think, pretty much one level below. A beta cam in terms of quality. The next shot I'm going to show is going to be a shot that was done with my beta cam and it was captured with the big brother to this one, the Cloner Alliance Pro, so that you'll see the difference between this one and the next model up, which I think you'll agree does look a little bit better than this one. This is good, but uh, the other one has a little bit more bandwidth and I think the picture quality is better. So let's take a look at a, a shot from my beta cam with the Cloner Alliance Pro, just for a comparison. Telling me the lens settings. Right now it's gone to f1.7. We're now at f2.8, 1.7, f2.4, which is probably like 30 BB gain. I do have that caution indicator in the display, I don't know what it means, but it appears to be working, it's recording. Now remember, this was recorded on a Betacam SX, but it was ca captured using the composite video, no S video, Take just composite video. The, more of the water here. With the Cloner Alliance Pro Box, which is the next one up. My step. These ducks are not toilet trained. Ha 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 ha. Now this is where a camera like this really will shine and if this was an HD camera it would just look beautiful. When you've got a good lens like this When you get dynamics like we're shooting into now this is where they run circles around consumer cameras I'll now show you a capture from a VHS tape.
In North America, 45% of the population suffers from some form of allergy symptoms. And uh, uh, we did shoot this on Betacam. This we was a, a growing number of new and a corporate video that I did have spread way back. Environment. And it was shot the on SP Betacam. Brought on by these microorganisms have created a greater awareness. Finally, for fun, this was a high definition capture from the Cloner Alliance Box Pro that captures in full HD. And this has got to be the funniest commercial I think I've seen in a long time. No one has to say a word. And this, I think, is what a lot of parents would like to do to their kids' tech. Smash it. Anyway, let's uh, tear this machine down and take a look inside it. Wi-Fi acting up? So it looks to be just four screws holding the unit together. Okay, it's got a metal base on it too. There's a speaker right here. The speaker is on the uh, front, I guess. Yeah, the speaker is on the front, along with the infrared sensor, which is actually right here. So the entire circuit board is one board. The speaker plugs in right over here. The LCD screen plugs in over there. There's a little battery in there that's obviously going to be to maintain the clock on it. Our uh, 3.5 millimeter plugs are over here. We've just got our standard S video and AV inputs here. Just a couple chips on this, There's not much to it. HDMI output. Two of our ugly surface mounted electrolytics, but hey, that's not a problem anymore. That problem's been long, long solved. I wouldn't worry about those these days. That was a problem back in the 1990s, which they've certainly corrected that a long, long time ago. So you don't have to worry about that. USB socket and micro SD or TF as they call it a card slot and that's about it it's going to be a single sided board pretty much guaranteed so there's nothing on the other side there's no reason to remove the screws other than the fact that uh, I would good chance I could damage the uh, flexible cable going to the display so I'm not going to go down that road and remove it so it's got a large heat sink, as you can see, that uh, is sandwiched up against that heat transfer compound that's over the main processor to drain away heat that is obviously going to be generated when it's digitizing and compressing the file. Final thoughts? Is this a good unit? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. It's not up to the quality of the Cloner Alliance Box Pro because that one allows you to upscale to 1080 but keep your aspect ratio and I think it does a little better job in that respect. But there is a price difference between this one and the Pro. The Pro has VGA component and HDMI input but lacks the S-Video input which this one has which gives that the advantage for being able to capture S-Video directly. Thanks for watching. Link is in the description. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.